Welcome to our Online. In this video, we're going to find the general equation of the temperature of the heat sink as a function of time. The reason for that is in this case, the heat sink is what can vary in temperature. The heat source is kept constant at 100 degrees centigrade. So as heat transfers from the heat source to the heat sink, the heat sink will heat up. The rate at which the heat transfer will diminish until both are at the same temperature. So how do we come up with that equation? Well, by now you should see the methodology. You start with the two equations that the dQ dt is equal to Ka over L times the difference in the temperature between the source and the sink. That's the heat transfer equation. And then we have the heat content here, Q equals mc times t, and we end up with the heat transfer equation, dQ is equal to mc dt. And we could write that as a differential equation, dQ dt is equal to mc dt dt. And now we're going to set these two equal to one another. So we do that by taking mc dt over dt is equal to Ka over L times the difference of T hot minus the temperature of the sink, which can vary. And then, of course, you realize that this is equal to 100. And we can rearrange the equation, putting all the, t the temperatures on one side, the t's on the other side. So here we end up with dt divided by 100 minus t is equal to, on the right side, we end up with Ka over mcl times dt. And now we're ready to integrate both sides. So we integrate the left side, we integrate the right side. And on the left side, we end up with... Uh, the natural log of 100 minus t. And then we have to put a negative in front of it because we had a minus t in the denominator. On the right side, we end up with Ka over mcl times t plus a constant of integration. So now let's figure out what that constant of integration is. We can do that by realizing that the initial temperature started at 20 degrees centigrade. So let's come up here, and we can say that when time is equal to 0, t is equal to 20. So let's go ahead and plug that in. So we end up with negative the natural log of 100 minus 20 is equal to Ka divided by mcl times 0. We plug in 0 for t plus the constant of integration, which means that the constant of integration is equal to, hmm, let's see here, minus the natural log of 100 minus 20. So it would be minus the natural log of 80. All right, so let's go ahead and plug that in and see what we get. So next we end up with minus the natural log of 100 minus t, is equal to Ka over MCL times T, and C now becomes minus the natural log of 80. So the next thing I can do is I move this to the other side, or what I can do is multiply everything by negative 1, because if I do that, this becomes plus, this becomes plus, and this becomes minus. And then when I move this to the other side, on the left side, I end up with the natural log of 100, minus t minus the natural log of 80 is equal to minus Ka over MCL times t. And then I can combine this because this can be written as the natural log of 100 minus t over 80 is equal to minus Ka over MCL times t. Now I can write both sides of the equation as the exponent of the natural number e. When I do that, on the left side, I end up with 100 minus t over 80 is equal to e to the minus ka over mcl times t. Moving the 80 across, I end up with 100 minus t is equal to 80 times e to the minus ka over mcl times t. Wow, I need a lot of board space here, so now let's move over here. With a little bit of space left. So now I'm going to move the 100 to the other side. Gives me a minus t 
is equal to minus 100 plus 80 times e to the minus, let me get rid of this arrow here because otherwise I don't have the room, ka over mcl times t. Now again I'm going to multiply everything by negative 1, which means that t as a function of time is going to be 100 minus 80 times e to the minus ka over mcl times t. And this is the equation I was looking for, the equation that tells me the temperature as a function of time as being 100 minus 80 times e to the minus ka over mcl times t. Now let's check it real quick. If t is equal to 0, e to the 0 is 1, 100 minus 80 is 20, and that is indeed the initial temperature, so it does seem to work out. What about when t becomes very large? When t becomes very large, e to the negative large number goes to 0, 80, 80 times 0 is 0, the final temperature will be 100 when t becomes very large. We'll calculate various times required to reach certain temperatures in the next video as an example. And that's how it's done.